you hear me? Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for coming. Great turnout. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I'm here. Um, first of all, uh, being part of the uh, Macy's Culinary Team uh, and Culinary Council. Um, I thought what, what a great way to uh, have an afternoon to uh, share with you my latest book, uh, Kicked Up Sandwiches. Uh, it came out exactly a week ago and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, the people that I have shared with, uh, last week I launched it on Good Morning America and then I was on The Chew and The View and The Rachel Show. And uh, It's amazing to me um, how close, uh, especially in America, how close sandwiches are to our culture because it doesn't really matter uh, what culture we come from. Uh, we all have some sort of sandwich memory uh, that we can relate to. Uh, I certainly have a few of them, which I share in the book, uh, growing up uh, in Fall River in Massachusetts, uh, Portuguese uh, descent so, uh, and French Canadian, so I share those. But as I have been very fortunate to travel, uh, not only in this country, but um, you know, in the world, there seems to always be a sandwich connection uh, no matter if you're in France or in Vietnam, uh, this, this, this connection of, uh, of a, a sandwich, a memory uh, of a sandwich. And so I decided to, uh, to take those memories, uh, particularly of my own, um, and of course my culinary team, uh, not only here in Orlando, but also in New Orleans, uh, and, and throughout our organization, and, and sort of poll what kind of sandwiches uh, were some of the favorites. Today, um, very, very simple. Um, we're doing a classic Monte Cristo, which those of you uh, that have been around a little bit, it's hard to find a Monte Cristo these days. I mean, they used to be very popular uh, 20 years ago on restaurant menus and, and uh, on lunch counters and, and diners, and now you're hard pressed to, to really find a classic Monte Cristo anymore, at least done uh, the right way. Um, and then secondly, um, what I've been really, really surprised about uh, in, in launching this book a week ago, but in all of the research, and particularly, uh, we did something really unique, um, and that is, is that we, we sort of uh, went and found the best bloggers uh, in the country, um, and some of you are in the room right now, but we went and found some of the best bloggers who are really into food, not just like great bloggers, but are really into food and really take it very seriously. Um, and what we found out, as I have found out, uh, not only this past week, but doing all the research for this great book, was how many families use a sandwich uh, and a soup at least once a week uh, as a dinner, uh, and as dinner at home. Uh, it's fast, it's really as great of quality that you want to put into the sandwich and the soup, um, as well as it's very economical. Uh, and practical, and certainly it's pretty easy for the for the kids uh, to to want to partake and participate in that. Uh, so first of all, I want to thank the bloggers. Secondly, I want to thank all of you, uh, most importantly, for being here. And, and all right, let's get started, shall we? Um, so the first sandwich, um, uh, we need a we need a batter. Um, so um, you, you know you can do this in a couple of different ways, and what I learned. Uh, when I first learned the sandwich, of course, uh, we used eggs, and, and so these days there's obviously allergies coming out the wazoo, uh, and really and truly, uh, actually my daughters just launched uh, uh, two weeks ago uh, their first book uh, on gluten-free cooking. Uh, so many people have celiac disease uh, right now, it's mind-blowing. We have to make adjustments in a restaurant, which um, who would have thought about that ten years ago? Um, of doing like a gluten-free pizza or gluten-free dishes, but anyhow, so no eggs we're going to use. We're just going to use uh, strictly uh, a few different dry ingredients, and we can always add, and I will add, but uh, flour. Uh, Got to have a little seasoning in here, so salt, and then baking powder and baking soda. Totally optional. If you don't think that you're going to keep this more than a day, um, then you really don't really have to use the baking soda. Uh, the baking powder I'm using because I want to get that little bit of poofiness that it's what it's going to do uh, as a natural um, leavening agent. So, 
we'll just sort of mix that up and then um, I'm going to use uh, a beer. Um, you don't have to use a beer, you could use milk. I thought, hey, listen, Macy's is paying the bill today, why, why not storage? <laughs> Might use two beers, who knows? Uh, so uh, the consistency of this should be really um, almost, as Greg was saying, we were talking earlier, Greg was saying, well, it's kind of like a good tempura batter, right? Uh, it should just about coat a spoon. It shouldn't be too thick, but it should be just a nice consistency. And you can always thin it out uh, as, as you begin. Now, in the, in the book, um, there's also a fabulous section for breads. Because I think when you think about sandwiches, right, um, it's not just about like ham and cheese. You know, and it's not just about like bologna and cheese or bologna. Although, there's nothing wrong with a great baked bologna sandwich, I can tell you that. <laughs> but really those components are the bread. Um, and these days, you have a lot of choices because there are so many great artisanal bakeries out there that are doing really, really awesome breads. So you can go that route, or you can go into the section uh, that's in kicked up sandwiches, and there's a whole bread section from basic to wheat to uh, multigrain, pump and nickel, et cetera, et cetera, if you want to choose to go that route and, and do your own bread. The, the other great section that's in there, um, uh, and it's worth, I mean, of course, it's great sandwiches, but is the condiment section. Uh, spoon it up is also what we call it in there because we tell you about how taking uh, really really simple uh, staples like mayonnaise whether you buy it or whether you make it and what you can do with them to really kick up your sandwiches uh, something as simple as like ricotta cheese which is on every supermarket shelf and how you can sort of flavor those things to really sort of kick up your sandwiches so anyhow there's a whole book of condiments in there and, and, and toppings and salad dressings, etc., that you should check out. That's really, really awesome. Uh, third is obviously uh, what are you putting in it? So, whether it's uh, a simple egg salad sandwich, which believe it or not, uh, was one of the um, almost number one blogged uh, sandwiches uh, in this little thing that we did, which blew my mind because I mean, I didn't think that egg salad uh, would be uh, that interesting to people, but when it, it goes to show me, when you have a great recipe, something as simple as egg salad done right and done to taste delicious, people are going to get excited about that. Um, and then, of course, beside uh, that, inside is what I was really talking about, is the, really the preparation. Whether you keep it uh, simple, uh, plain, whether you toast it, whether you griddle it, whether you griddle it on a machine, whether you griddle it on a stone. Uh, in this case, uh, we're using our great... Um, sort of Macy's pot here, uh, which is sort of a, a thing that we've done exclusive for them to sort of fry. We, we, we're doing it in a, to, to fry the sandwich, believe it or not. You can griddle it, and if you want to do that, but there's nothing wrong with frying if you fry right, okay? The whole key of frying right is the temperature, okay? People out there think that frying, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to die, and my things, and my nerves, and this is going to all get clotted, and oh my goodness, and... You know, if you fry bad, then you should talk like that. But if you fry right, you don't really have to uh, have to worry. And it's all about really the temperature and how you do that. If you're going to fry on the stovetop, as we are today, uh, as opposed to a fryer, um, you want to make sure that the oil is about 50% of the uh, what I call the weight in the pot because it's going to expand. Whether we put shrimp in there or catfish or whether we're going to put a Monte Cristo in there, it's important that uh, we sort of keep that together. All right, very simple innards. Uh, good roast turkey, uh, good ham. This is an uncured ham. Uh, good American cheese, not that processed crap that's out there. And good American cheese, okay? Good ingredients make great food, make great sandwiches. Very, very simple condiments. Um, so we have our bread, and basically for this, what we're going to do is we're going to take... Um, a little bit of mayonnaise or as much as you like some people are not mayonnaise fans that's okay uh, but we want to give as I say in the book the spread a chance to really sort of show itself uh, the other thing that I also like beside that is is adding a little bit of mustard uh, this is a Dijon mustard uh, I don't think that you have to add a lot but I think the combination of this uh, really makes uh, this to be a simple but yet delicious sandwich and then from there what we're going to do is we're going to start 
with the cheese first. Uh, and then we're going to start with the roast turkey. And you see, you know, just, there's also as simple as a sandwich. There's also a technique that goes with this to, to make it work, to make it all stay together. It's not just throwing everything in between two slices of bread. If you want to do that, go on a fishing trip. Or go on a, you know, on a picnic or that you don't really care about. And then we're going to take the ham and really just sort of layer that. And then we're going to come back with the top layer of cheese. As I said, what is very important for this particular sandwich is really pressing this. Pressing it is very important. And don't mind getting your hands dirty. Now, the key to the next thing is soft butter. It really, and, and particularly if you're going to griddle this as opposed to frying it. If you're going to griddle this, you really want to make sure that the butter is soft. It's not going to tear the bread up and shouldn't tear the bread up. And you want to make sure that you distribute it evenly, which is why you have a sandwich spreader. Or you could use a good butter knife. Pressing it really, really good, as I said, is very, is very key. And then, once it's pressed, then you can griddle it or fry it. Uh, with this particular thing, what we would do now is take it, dip it inside of our batter. Check your batter before you're going to do this. As you can see now, our batter has gotten thick as it's sitting there. It's just because it's relaxed. It's the way that it's going to do, which is what you can always add to thin it out, which is perfect. Now, a trick that Greg and I were just talking about, and Bernard, uh, before I came out, was for this particular sandwich, it's really important that the proteins sort of solidify again. So we have the proteins, the meats, the cheese, that we've sort of relaxed as we uh, have made the sandwiches, okay? But now what we want to do is we want to take, and we want to take those proteins, and you can either wrap them so you can do it ahead of time, or we want to put them back in the refrigerator so that they really solidify. Because then what you want to be able to do is to be able to really just sort of dip that inside of the sandwich. And right, what you want to do then is we, we have got this out. We're going to just sort of pack this dry a little bit. I don't know if you ever had a Monte Cristo, but preserves are some sort of jam was always sort of a, a centerpiece uh, or a marmalade, whether you like raspberry, orange, whatever you like. The other thing was I never could imagine why powdered sugar would be sprinkled on a sandwich like that. I could never figure that out. And then I figured out that the whole key to that is that if you did fry bad, the powdered sugar covered it up. And so you really couldn't, you couldn't really, so look, you just, a little bit like that, and maybe another, another layer, sort of like this. Doesn't that look great? I can't. Right here at Mason's. Yeah, very simple.